Yesterday I prepared some tricks to try to run my FASMG, which is a 32-bit code, in long mode. And I'm now going to show the tricks once more and discuss them. Well, at first we might try to just assemble it with U64, so assemble it in long mode, this entire core of FASMD, and see what happens. The instruction push ESI cannot be assembled in long mode. And here comes a first topic to discuss, the long mode encodings and how some instructions that were possible in 32-bit mode cannot be encoded and some can and even some even have the same codes. Mm. Let's use this file that we have been using some time ago. And let's look at a few example instructions. Oh, let me assemble this as 32 bit instead. And let's look at this with some other disassembler. Okay, <clears throat> these are the two instructions assembled as 32 bit code. If we switch to 64 bit, there is a single change because the operand size in long mode is again 32 bit by default. So if we change nothing in instruction, it is going to state 32 bit. But addressing is 64 bit by default. So when we change to long mode, the same code of instruction is going to use a 64 bit register as default in addressing. However, it is still possible to use 32-bit addressing with 6-7 prefix. This is the same instruction with 6-7 prefix and it now uses 32-bit addressing. So at first look, our 32-bit code could perhaps be assembled to work in long mode because all the 32-bit instructions are going to be encoded the same. They are going to have the same codes, in fact. Uh, for addresses, there would be 6-7 prefixes inserted here and there when we use 32-bit register in, addresser, in addresses. And mm, 
And as long as we manage to keep all pointers 32 bit, so as long as our every memory block that we use is in the low 4 gigabytes of memory, then this should just work, right? Well, except for this one problem that I have already shown with push instruction. This push instruction in, in long mode becomes a 64-bit push. And this is something that we cannot modify with prefix. It is not possible to have a 32-bit push. Because 6.7 prefix only applies to size of registers used for memory addressing, so 6.7 here would not do anything in this case. And this is why when we tried to assemble it, we got an error on push instruction. Let me go to the directory when we have this one. Yeah, so we need to do something about this instruction. There is one thing about FASMG that is specific to how I wrote it, this code, is that I never do anything to ESP register manually. <clears throat> I always use push pop, never adjust the stack pointer in any other way and never even access it a, a memory through this register addressing except for occasional perhaps access of the top of the stack so i never use for example this kind of addressing I do not make any assumptions on the stack layout. I only allowed myself to access top of the stack this way. This make it, makes it easier to, to adjust the code of FASMG. This might not be as easy in general case. In case of FASM1, I wrote macros that... Oh, I can show them once more macros that simulate 32-bit pushes like here they just adjust RSP manually and instead of using push instruction then they just do MOV to place the right values on the stack in case of FASMG I do not need to emulate 32-bit layout because I do not use that layout, I just... Every push is paired, paired with pop. Like here. here. We have three pushes and then three pops. <clears throat> so, this is why... this might work for us in case of FASMG. We overwrite push instruction with additional macro that first checks if if argument is a register 
one of the registers for which we defined promote variable. This is a very simple promotion table of 32-bit register to 64-bit. And instead of pushing 32-bit register, we push 64-bit register. Obviously, this does not hurt. Our 32-bit code is not going to use the upper house of 64-bit registers anyway. We restore and restore the whole 64-bit register and 32-bit register is obviously restored in the process as well. When operand is not register, uh, then we cannot do a simple promotion like this. Because when we have, let's say, push double word, then if we tried to rewrite it, rewrite it to push quad word, then we would ac access memory in excess some additional 32-bit value that comes after the one. And this could lead to problems. For example, this could be on the boundary of accessible pages and cause an exception. In case of pop, it will be even worse because by changing double word to quad word, we would overwrite some additional 32-bit value and probably break something in the process. For this reason, for operands that are not registers, we move 32-bit operand to R8 register. The upper half of R8 is then cleared, because this is how long mode works, and we can store entire R8. Well, even if upper part was not cleared, this would still work, because we only need to store and restore 32-bit value, because we make a symmetric effect for pop instruction. We then pop R8 and move where it should be. Again, we are free to use R8 register because this is one of the new registers available in long mode. So, obviously, not used by a 32 bit code. Next problem if we, is with jump instruction. Just like push and pop, jump by default is 64-bit and we cannot change it with any pre prefix. It is not possible to encode 32-bit target for jump. So we enable another trick I have prepared. We do this for both jump and call instructions. With iterate we define two macros, like here we define push and pop, here we define jump and call macros in a single iterate loop. For memory operand we use R8 register similarly to how we did it with push. And now we rely on the fact that in long mode when we access a 32-bit register the upper half of 64-bit register that contains it is zeroed. Therefore, we can then jump or call. This instruction is going to be jump or call. We are going to jump to our 8 register, which contains 32-bit address 0 extended to 64 bits.
if there is a promotion defined for, the, for argument, so it is one of these register, 32-bit registers, then we promote it to use 64-bit register. And here we rely on clearing too, on clearing the upper half of register. If a 32-bit code uses jump instruction with register, let's say jump EAX, Hmm. I don't know if we have an example here. Hmm. I have such instruction here somewhere, but I'm not sure where. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's here. If we have an instruction of this kind, this 32-bit register had to be set up in some way. And we can mostly safely assume that the upper half of 64-bit RAX register is then zeroed because any operation that modifies EAX should zero the upper half. The only case when this could fail is if we would uh, <laughs> make, modify just AL perhaps. I don't think it is viable to have it break. We had to set up this address some way in EAX and this cleared the upper half of 64-bit register. So we can just jump to a 64-bit register instead of 32-bit one because the upper half can be safely assumed to be zeroed. And now we have jump out of range. As you may know, this type of jump, G, J, A, C, X, Z, is the only one of the, f not the only, one of the few remaining jumps, like loop instruction, that have a very short range, 128 bytes in every direction. This means that our code in long mode became larger and some jumps are now out of range. This is because of 6-7 prefixes that I mentioned earlier. So, for example, this instruction in long mode needs a 6-7 prefix. We can try to get rid of this prefix, but then address becomes this. Uses a 64-bit register instead. We can reason similarly to how we reasoned in the case of jams, that in our 32-bit code, the upper half of such register should be zeroed because when 32-bit code did set up this 32-bit register in some way it obviously has cleared the upper half of 64-bit register in process but there is 
one potential trap hidden here. For example, promoting this instruction. It should still work with 64-bit registers because the, the upper halves are zeroed. But this would not work if our code used negative offsets. What if this register is negative? Then zero extended it to RCX is not a, the right thing to do, you would have to be sign extended. This is a possible place when our code could break. And now, if we could assume that we never use negative offsets throughout our 32-bit code, we could just promote the addressing and get rid of 6-7 prefixes. Yeah, we would need to sign extend this value, but mm, our macros, our, our tricks that we use to assemble the same code and modified 32-bit program to operate in long mode, they have no easy way of telling whether they should sign extend something. I am pretty sure that in FASMG I do not use negative offsets anywhere. However, for example, you have provided a nice memory alloc implementation for me to use in our tests and I would like to use it. But I have noticed that it uses negative offsets here. EDX is now a negative offset. So if we promoted this instruction to use this address instead, it would not work correctly. Because upper half of RDX is then zeroed and not filled with ones as it should be when sign extending a negative number. Yeah, of course, uh, I can adapt this code to follow the same standards as FASMG code. So, however, I never documented exactly that, for example, that this code in FASMG should never use negative offsets. It happens to not use them, but, but it is not documented. Therefore, perhaps we should try another approach and, and try to live with 6-7 prefixes anyway. So let's say that for the sake of safety, we would like to assemble 32-bit addresses with 6-7 prefixes. Okay, our code is going to be, get bigger. Well, there is a problem of this jumps out of range. Of course, we could go to the FASMG sources and just modify them, simply replace them with tests JZ. Uh, 
but we are trying to do do this in a way that would not touch the original source of FASMG. So the other way we can do this is to customize Let's place it here. This instruction. Perhaps do it like this. Oh, but this is not fully compatible. Do you know why? Test instruction destroys flags and this jump does not touch flags. So if we want it to be completely safe and fully compatible we cannot do it this way. Instead, we can do something that I would call spaghettification of code. Make some local label, label and jump to like this no no not this order <laughs> in this order <laughs> so we jump to trampoline trampoline that is able to jump to far target and if we have not taken the jump then we needs to jump over this instruction. <laughs> this does not alter flags. These are all just jumps. Oh, you do not know this instruction? Whoa. Let's go to the right place to look it up. Hey, where is it? Okay, it's hidden with all the conditional jumps. Jump if register is zero. This specific register. This instruction exists only for CX register not for any other one it is a 
they have put it with conditional gems in the table here, but this is in fact more in family with loop instruction. Both, both this jump and loop instruction can only be short. Both operate on CX or ECX or RCX register. And both are, are modified in interesting ways, both by 6.6 and 6.7 prefixes, but that is story for another session perhaps. It will be interesting to talk about it, but not right now. Let's not di digress too far. Hmm, it does not enter this macro for some reason. Yeah, it does not enter this macro for some reason, but why?
All right, I think I found a bug in FASMG macros. Yeah, there is a back here. This should be case insensitive. Right, it should work now. I'm not going to delve into detail details of FASG macros this time. I'm just fixing it and let's go on. Alright. Oh, since we are at that. We can copy this wrench tag. And just use a regular instruction if we are still in range. A small optimization. Well, what do you know? More than 100 bytes <laughs> cut off this way. Now, I have prepared this trick. This is a modification to macro that encodes 32 bit and 64 bit addresses. We are not going to use all of these tricks. This part would promote 32-bit register to 64-bit registers always. As I said, this, this is problematic if we ever use any negative offsets in registers. But if we do not use negative offsets anywhere in registers, we can promote the size of registers in addressing and then we can avoid six, seven prefixes and shrink our code. The other trick is when there is ESP in address. This is another perhaps complex topic, but when FASG macros interpret addresses, they split them into address registers and displacement part. So we can check here if address is relative to ESP register and then modify displacement. This is a safety net. I already said that I never use offsets relative to ESP. So I never use something like this. However, if by mistake I do it, this little code is going to modify displacement. So ESP plus plus 4 
should become and we need it to become RSP plus 8. So now since we do not do general promotion, we need to do promotion at least for at least for ESP register. We should never, in long mode, we should never be using addresses like this one. Because we don't, do not know where the stack is placed. This is why I said in FastG I never modify stack frame manually. I always just use push pop, call red and let the stack be where it is, even it, if it is at some high 64-bit address. The other way to do it would be could be similar to how I did it in fast ones, just define ESP RSP. Replace it everywhere. But I can do it this way because I know that in FastG I'm not using ESP register ever. except for this this single case type of uh, access where I just access top of the stack. This one is potentially problematic, so we leave it alone for now. Our code assembles. We can even take a look at it. Oh, it still has this instruction I made when I was testing. I need to reassemble it. Now this is just this code reassembled as a long mode code. You can see that in long mode FASM by default uses RIP relative addresses for labels. This does not grow our code because RIP relative addressing in long mode uses exact same upcode as absolute addressing in old legacy modes. A 
And you can see memory accesses still use 32-bit registers to be safe. So this is where we have 67 prefix. And this is what grows this executable, the size of code. Let's now make it into ELF executable so that we can start testing it. I have already copied some of the things that PhasmG normally does and uh, converted them to Linux 64-bit layout of stack and 64-bit syscalls. I do not have malloc yet ready, but I did copy 64-bit implementations of basic functions that FASM and FASMG use. The interfaces that FASM and FASMG use are very similar to each other, so I could mostly just copy functions and tweak just a little to adapt them for FASMG. So we call display string to display PhasmG logo, and this is the only thing we do for now. But let's try it anyway. For simplicity, I'm just using a Linux subsystem on Windows. Alright, the logo is shown, but this does not prove much. This <laughs> not much of a program is here. We have assembled the entire core but we are not yet using it. If we take a look at assembly init, which we should call, well, we need an memory allocation routines to, to be able to start even this first routine of assembler. So this is where we are going to take a look at memory allocation you have given me. Alright, we need to add some variables. They all need to be initialized with zero values, right? Mm. I should then pad them here. Bef because all the variables here are uninitialized to not grow the executable so I should not put these variables after them just before
Now, there is one thing I wanted to ask. Uh, well, we are not going to talk about the specifics of the implementation right now, as this could take some time. Here... I know. Because I see that in some cases there is an extra space that is added to the block but this is not returned to the color I would prefer this to be returned so perhaps do it this way because if there is more memory that could be used I want to know FastG looks at the value that is returned by malloc and if it has allocated more memory that, than it was requested then FastG can still take a note and use this additional memory. Oh, okay. Yes, I see that. Block. The actual allocated memory starts after 4 bytes. So we need to adjust it like this. Yeah, I just wanted to take note of this additional space added here. Because FastG is going to be able to use it. Okay, but since you mention M check let's take a look at M check what does it do and where is it called from oh it's not called So if it is not called, then how do I use it? Oh, I see. This is to demonstrate the concept. First, let's see if that assembles. Oh, what 
Okay, okay, okay. I need to remove them from here. Well, you know, we, we could use system init routine to set up some variables. Instead of just initializing them here with zeros, we could set everything up here. But we can optimize things like that later. <laughs> All right, our push tricks do not work when we actually use 64-bit registers. How to correct this? Well, there is one way. Ah, you see. These tricks are only really needed for core of FASMG. So perhaps the right thing to do would be to enable these tricks only here. I wanted to say to enable them here and disable here, but since there are only data definitions later, we can just enable them here. So let's make another include file. one that only has the tricks and in self host we are going only to leave the other ones so now we first define everything system related and only then start using the tricky macros to assemble 32-bit code in long mode. I did cut too much. How do I do it? Hmm. need this in self-host anyway, because this is a macro that enables push to have multiple registers on one line.
Oh yeah, and now my system. does not have a comfort of using the same tricks. Great, it assembled. I need to clean up this later. I'm pretty sure I can do it in a cleaner way. But, <clears throat> well, now, now since analog is outside of our tricky macros, then the fact that it uses negative offsets here is no longer a problem. So we could in fact try to get rid of 6-7 prefixes, but let's first try to get, get it running and perhaps optimize things like that later. Let's do assembly in it. Oh, and we need to handle out of memory error. I believe we can copy it from regular version. Exit code free.
<clears throat> Alright, let's just do a sanity check. Oh, I know one important thing. Yeah, we need to we need to handle this. Would this be enough? Hmm. I believe so. Okay, it works. <clears throat> it seems that initialization have worked. Allocated some memory. We could attempt to assemble something. We do not have a command line command line handling for now. Oh, this function takes argument, I forgot. <laughs> Let's copy main assembly loop. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you see, we can provide a string in memory to assemble or, or a file or both. or none even. Let's assemble something from memory. Oh, we have show display here, so if we display something, we should see it immediately. And this is another message we might need. First assemble. Oh, yeah, we have not defined this yet.
Oh well, this is not a good sign. <laughs> We are going to need some debugging, but I feel that we are over time now. This has been a long session already, so let's continue next, next time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we are not far from there. As for today, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>